The bull call spread option strategy is a strategy that profits when the stock price increases, and it is one of the four vertical spread option strategies. Compared to just buying 100 shares of stock, the bull call spread can make more money from a small stock price increase, which means the bull call spread offers the trader leverage, the bull call spread has less loss potential compared to buying 100 shares of stock. The return potential of a bull call spread is typically much higher than buying 100 shares of stock because when you buy 100 shares of stock, the cost of purchasing those shares is going to be far more significant than buying a call spread on that same exact stock. In this video, I'm going to visually explain to you exactly how the bull call spread strategy works. We're going to look through historical trade examples so you can see how the strategy has performed in various scenarios as the stock price changes over time. And I'm also going to show you how to set up a bull call spread position using the Tastyworks trading platform. Stay tuned. The bull call spread is a limited risk option strategy that profits when the stock price increases, but has limited loss potential in the event of a large share price decrease. Other names for the bull call spread strategy are the long call spread, call debit spread, or simply buying a call spread. The bull call spread strategy is constructed with two simultaneous transactions, one being buying a call option and the second transaction being selling a call option at a higher strike price. So to construct a bull call spread position, buy a call option and then you sell another call option at a higher strike price in the same expiration cycle as the first option. Compared to just buying the call option all by itself, selling a call option at a higher strike price than the call option that was purchased reduces the cost of the trade, which effectively reduces the overall loss potential. However, by selling a call option against the purchased call option, the position has limited profit potential, whereas when you just buy a call option, you have unlimited profit potential since there's no limit to how much a stock's price can increase. So the benefits of trading a bull call spread are that the position costs less compared to just buying the call option, which means you have less loss potential. However, the downside is that you do not have unlimited profit potential when trading a bull call spread, which makes it a less aggressive strategy than just buying a call option by itself. So to show you what I mean by this, let's go ahead and take a look at a hypothetical long call spread position and look at the expiration payoff graph so we can see the profit profit and loss potential of the position at various stock prices at the time of expiration. In this example, let's say the stock price is at $150 per share at the time of buying the call spread, and I'm going to construct a call spread from the following options. First, I'm going to buy the 145 call option for $8.80, and then I'm going to sell the 155 call option for $3.99. Since I paid $8.80 for the 145 call, and I collected $3.99 for selling the 155 call, this particular bull call spread position has a net debit of $4.81. In options trading, whenever you pay more option premium than you collect when entering a position, since you pay out more than you collect, the position is said to be entered for a net debit. When you collect more than you pay out, the position is said to be entered for a net credit. So in this example, since I'm paying $8.80 for the 145 call, and I'm collecting $3.99 for the 155 call, I'm collecting less than I paid out. So in this example, the bull call spread is entered for a $4.81 debit. Any trader who buys this call spread might say that they purchased the 145, 155 call spread for $4.81. Let's take a look at the expiration profit and loss graph for this bull call spread position. In this graph, we are looking at the expiration profit and loss potential of this bull call spread position based on various stock prices at expiration. Where do these profit and loss numbers come from? The maximum loss potential of a bull call spread position is the net debit times 100, since every standard option contract corresponds to 100 shares of stock. So to get the maximum loss potential, we take how much we paid for the position and multiply it by 100 to account for the option contract multiplier of 100. In this example, since I paid $4.81 for this bull call spread position, the maximum loss potential in this case is $481, which comes from the $4.81 debit times 100, which comes out to a loss potential of $481 for every call spread that I purchased. A bull call spread's maximum loss potential is realized if the stock price is at or below the long call strike price at the time of expiration. In this particular trade, the long call strike price is $145 
And as we can see in this graph, at any price at or below $145, the loss on this position will be $481. And that's because at any price below $145, the 145 call and the 155 call will expire worthless, which means the bull call spreads value overall will be $0. Since I paid $4.81 for the spread, if the spread's expiration value is $0, that would represent a loss of $481 per spread. The maximum profit potential of any bull call spread position is the width of the strikes less the debit paid times 100. The maximum value of a bull call spread at expiration is the width of the strikes. So if I paid $4.81 for this 145, 155 call spread, the most this spread can be worth at expiration is $10. And that would occur if the stock price is at or above the short call strike price of $155 at expiration. If the spread's maximum value is $10 and I paid $4.81 for it, the most it can increase in my favor is $5.19, which comes from the $10 strike width less the $4.81 premium that I paid at the time of entering the trade. If I have a $5.19 profit on the call spread and I multiply that by 100, which is the option contract multiplier, I get a maximum profit potential of $519. The breakeven price of a bull call spread position is the long calls strike price plus the net debit paid. In this example, the long call strike price is $145 and the net debit paid at the time of entering the trade is $4.81. If I take the long call strike price of $145 and add the net debit of $4.81, I get a breakeven price of $149.81. At $149.81, the 145 call will be worth $4.81 but the 155 call will expire worthless, which means the net value of the 145, 155 call spread at expiration would be $4.81. And since that's the exact same price that I paid for it at the time of entering the trade, the position will have no profit or no loss, which means it breaks even at expiration. Now that we've looked at a hypothetical bull call spread example, Let's go ahead and go through some actual trade examples using historical option data so you can see exactly how the bull call spread position is expected to perform in various scenarios. In this first example, we're gonna look at a scenario where the bull call spread ends up with the maximum profit potential at the time of expiration. Here are the trade details. At the time of entering the bull call spread position, the stock price was at $57.47, and I'm going to use options with 82 days until expiration. To construct the bull call spread position, I'm going to purchase the 49 call option for $11.10 and sell the 70 call option for $1.85. In this example, the net debit paid is $9.25, and that's because I paid $11.10 for the 49 call, but I received $1.85 for selling the 70 call. $11.10 minus $1.85 gives me a net debit of $9.25. This particular call spread's maximum profit potential is $1,175, and that stems from the fact that the spread is $21 wide. So if we take the short call strike of 70 and subtract the long call strike of 49, we get a call spread width of $21. Since I paid $9.25 for this call spread, the most it can increase in my favor is $11.75, which comes from the difference between the strike width of $21 and the net debit paid of $9.25. If I buy a call spread for $9.25 and its value increases to $21, the profit per spread will be $11.75. But since we have to account for the option contract multiplier of 100, that $11.75 profit on the spread actually translates to a profit of $1,175 per call spread that was purchased. The maximum loss potential of this call spread is $925, and that's because I paid a $9.25 debit to enter the trade, and the worst case scenario is that the stock price is below $49 at expiration, in which case the 49 and 70 call option will expire worthless, and therefore the spread's value overall will be $0. If I pay $9.25 for a spread that expires worthless, my loss is $925 per call spread that I purchased. 
The break-even price of this call spread position is $58.25, which comes from the long call strike price of $49 plus the debit paid of $9.25. 49 plus $9.25 gives us an expiration break-even price of $58.25. At $58.25, the 49 call will be worth $9.25 at expiration, but the 70 call will expire worthless, which means the net value of the 4970 call spread will be worth $9.25 at expiration, if the stock price is right at $58.25. Let's take a look at how this trade performed. On the top of the chart, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the strike prices used in this particular call spread. And on the bottom of the chart, we're looking at the price changes of that call spread as the stock price changes over time. Over the first 35 to 40 days of the trade, we can see that the stock price traded right near the spread's break-even price of $58.25, which resulted in minimal losses for the call spread during that period. With around 45 days to expiration, the stock price surged to about $80 a share, at which point the 4970 bull call spread was fully in the money, which means the stock price was above both of the spread's call options. Because the stock price increased to a value significantly higher than the call spread strike prices, the call spread itself actually experienced a price increase to around $21, which is the maximum spread value since the strike prices are $21 wide. The stock price remained above the call spread for the remainder of the trade and at expiration, the 4970 bull call spread expired with its maximum value of $21 per spread. Because of that, the trader who purchased this call spread for $9.25 would have realized the maximum profit potential of $1,175 per call spread purchased. To summarize what happened in this trade, over the initial period, we saw that the stock price was trading right near the spread's break-even price of $58.25, which resulted in virtually no losses for the spread during that time period. Fortunately, the stock price gapped higher and traded above the call spread strike prices for the remainder of the trade, and at expiration, with the call spread fully in the money, the call spread's value was the width of the strikes, or $21, which resulted in the maximum profit potential of $1,175 for any call spread trader who purchased the spread for $9.25. It's important to point out that in this particular example, the call spread trader could have sold the spread for just under $21 the moment the stock price had surged to about $80. When trading call spreads, you do not have to hold the position to expiration, and in this example, the trader more than likely would have sold the spread right when the stock price increased because with 40 days to expiration and the spread's value right underneath its maximum value of $21, it's wise to close the position because the trader has made everything that they can make on that trade at that point, but there's still 40 days to expiration, which means there's 40 days left for the position to become less profitable. In this next example, we're gonna look at a scenario where the bull call spread trader loses the maximum loss potential because the stock price decreases. Here are the trade details. At the time of entering during this bull call spread position, the stock price was $569.92, and the options used had 35 days until expiration. To construct the bull call spread position, I purchased the 575 call option for $32.45, and I sold the 635 call option for $11. In this example, the net debit paid is $21.45, which stems from the fact that I paid $32.45 for the 575 call, but I received $11 for selling the 635 call. $32.45 minus $11 gives me a net debit paid of $21.45. The maximum profit potential for this bull call spread position is $3,855 per call spread purchased. That comes from the fact that the spread width is $60, so 635 being the short call strike price and 575 being the long call strike price. 635 minus 575 gives us a strike width of $60, which means the maximum this spread can be worth at expiration is $60. Since I paid $21.45 for the spread, the most the spread's price can increase above my purchase price is $38.55, 
And if I multiply that by 100, which is the option contract multiplier, I get a maximum profit potential of $3,855. The maximum loss potential is $2,145 per call spread purchased. And that comes from the fact that I paid $21.45 for the spread. And if I multiply that by 100, which is the option contract multiplier, I get a maximum loss potential of $2,000. $145 per call spread purchased. The expiration break even price of this bull call spread position is $596.45. That break even price comes from the long call strike price of $575 plus the $21.45 debit that I paid when entering the spread. At $596.45, the $575 call will have $21.45 of intrinsic value at expiration and the 635 call option will expire worthless, which means the net value of the 575 635 call spread at expiration will be $21.45 if the stock price is exactly at $596.45 at the time of expiration. Let's take a look and see what goes wrong with this trade. In this example, the trade started off very well as the stock price went from $575 to up to $635 at which point the 575 635 call spread was fully in the money with a value of about $39. At $39, the unrealized profit at that moment was around $1,800 per call spread. Unfortunately, the stock price quickly reversed directions and rapidly declined to a price of about $480 per share, ultimately ending up near $530 at the time of expiration. With the stock price completely below the call spread strike prices at expiration, neither of the call options had any intrinsic value at expiration, which means both the 575 and 635 call option expired worthless, which means the 575, 635 call spreads value at expiration is $0 since both of those options expired worthless. With an initial purchase price of $21.45, and an expiration value of $0. The loss on this trade was $21.45 per spread, which translates to an actual loss of $2,145 per spread that was purchased. In this example, if the trader had instead purchased 100 shares of stock, for $575 per share, the loss on that trade would have been $4,500 with the stock price at $530 at expiration. The loss of $4,500 on 100 shares of stock relative to the maximum loss potential of this call spread, which is $2,145 at expiration, highlights one of the benefits and one of the reasons why people buy call spreads as opposed to buying shares of stock. And that's that when you buy a call spread, you know what your risk is up front, and that risk is going to be far less significant than actually buying 100 shares of stock. Now that we've gone through historical trade examples for the long call spread position, what does setting up a bull call spread look like on actual trading software? For this example, I'm gonna use the Tastyworks trading platform to show you exactly how to set up a bull call spread position, and I'm actually going to route the position for you so you can see what it looks like to have that trade actually get filled. Be sure to check the link in the description for information on how you can get one of our paid courses completely free when you open and fund your first Tastyworks brokerage account using the project option referral code. So I've just opened up the Tastyworks trading platform and for this example, I'm gonna look at buying a call spread in Facebook. As we can see here, Facebook has declined recently from just under $200 and it's currently trading at $178.56. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at a, a couple different call spread positions in Facebook to show you how to set up the trade and I'll actually route it and fill the trade for you so you can see what it looks like when you actually put the trade on and then I'll actually take it off as well. So the first thing I have to do is go over to the trade page and choose an expiration cycle. So there's this purple line going across here and it says E to the left side and on the right hand side it says July 24th. And this is telling me that Facebook reports earnings on July 24th and the line is placed appropriately in between these expiration cycles so I can choose an expiration cycle before or after the earnings date. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the 49 day expiration cycle which is July 2019. So just click that open. I'm going to just close the strikes here and keep 20 strikes open. So the first thing we need to do is buy a call option. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at buying a call option that is below Facebook's current price 
In other words, I'm gonna look at buying an in the money call option. So let's look at buying the 170 call option to start and then to create the bull call spread position, I have to sell another call option at a higher strike price. So let's go ahead and look at the 185 call option and to sell that or to queue it up to sell it, I just click on the bid price. So now I have a bull call spread position queued up. I haven't executed the trade or anything. I'm just setting it up to analyze the price, the risk and the reward. And then if I want to put the trade on, I can go ahead and review and send it and try to get it filled. So right here we have the 170, 185 bull call spread. And this is a 15 point wide call spread. And the current price is $8.53. So with that being said, if I just lock the price at $8.50 to make the math easier, we can see that the maximum loss potential is $850, which comes from the spreads price times the option contract multiplier of 100, as we've discussed earlier. And the maximum profit potential is $650, and that's because this is a $15 wide spread. And if I take the $15 strike width and subtract the $8.50 debit from that, I get a maximum profit of $650. I can actually analyze the profit and loss graph of this position by clicking on the curve view, enabling analysis, and then on the upper right hand corner here, we'll see that it is saying that I'm analyzing buying the 170 call option and selling the 185 call option in the July 19 expiration cycle. I'm just gonna close that up, but as we can see here, this is the expiration risk profile graph for this particular bull call spread position. So at any price below the long call strike price of $170, this position will expire worthless because if Facebook is below 170 in 49 days, the 170 call and the 185 call will be worthless, in which case the spread will be worthless as well. And if I pay $8.50 for it, my loss would be $850. On the profit side of things, we can see that at any price equal to or above $185, which is the short calls strike price, we can see that the maximum profit of $650 will be realized at expiration in 49 days. And that's because if Facebook is anywhere above $185 in 49 days, this spread will be trading worth the strike width since this 170 call option is 15 points lower than the 185 call option, the 170 call is always going to be worth $15 more than the 185 call at expiration, assuming that the stock price is above both call options. So using the analyze tab is a really quick way you can visualize any option position before you put it on and make sure you're doing the trade that you actually want to put on. So I just chose random strike prices for this trade, but I wanna talk about a couple different methods that you can use when setting up a bull call spread position. So as I mentioned in this example, I bought an in the money call option and I sold an out of the money call option, meaning the call option that I purchased had a strike price below the current stock price and the call option that I sold has a strike price above the current stock price that Facebook has. So another way that you can set up a bull call spread, which is a much more aggressive way, is buying an at the money call option and selling an out of the money call option. So one way I could do that is just move the strikes up. So let's say I wanna buy the 180 call and sell the 195 call. In this example, I'm buying an at the money or slightly out of the money call option and selling an even further out of the money call option. And notice that this spread is still $15 wide, but it is costing $5.21. So the previous spread that we looked at, which was the 170, 185 call spread, that was trading for $8.50, and this spread is trading for $5.20. That's because this spread has a lower probability of being successful compared to the 170, 185 call spread, because for this spread to be maximally profitable at expiration, Facebook has to be above 195, Whereas with the other spread, Facebook only had to be above 185 for the maximum profit to be realized. So in other words, because this spread has a lower probability of success, the cost of the spread is lower, and that means there's less loss potential compared to the 170, 185 call spread, but there's more profit potential because I'm buying a 15 point wide spread for a lower cost. The third way you can set up a bull call spread position is buying an in the money option and selling an in the money option. 
So using our 15 point wide spread again, let's do the 160, 175 call spread. And as you'll notice, Facebook is already above the short strike of 175, which means all that has to happen for this call spread to experience the maximum profit potential at expiration is Facebook has to remain above 175, which means Facebook can actually decrease by $3.20 and this spread will still be maximally profitable at expiration. Now because of that, this spread has a higher probability of success, and as we can see here on the bottom left, it says the probability of profit is 64%. And that's telling me that if I hold this spread all the way to expiration, the probability that I'll have a one penny profit on the trade is approximately 64%. And that makes sense to me because Facebook can decrease by about $3 and the spread will still be maximally profitable at expiration. However, because this spread is fully in the money already and we don't need any stock price movement to happen for the spread to profit at expiration, this spread costs $11.20. And that means that the maximum profit is lower since I'm still buying a 15 point wide spread for a higher cost. My maximum profit is $380, and my maximum loss potential is $1,120. So if you buy an in-the-money spread, you're going to pay more for it, which means you'll have less profit potential and more loss potential. If you buy an in-the-money option and sell an out-of-the-money option, that spread will be a lower cost than the first spread, which means you'll have more profit potential and less loss potential. And in the most aggressive scenario, if you buy both out of the money options, that will have the lowest spread cost, which means you'll have the lowest amount of risk and the most profit potential, but this spread has the lowest probability of making money. So in all cases, the probability of the spread's success has a direct relationship with the amount of risk and profit potential for that particular call spread. Really quickly, I'm actually going to put on a call spread position. So I'm gonna buy the 175 call option and sell the 180 call option just for demonstrational purposes. And this spread is currently trading for $2.78. I'm just going to lock it in at 282. So I'm gonna hit review and send, and this is going to confirm everything with me. And as we can see here, it says I'm trying to buy a call vertical spread in Facebook. And more specifically, I'm buying the 175, 180 call spread in the July 2019 expiration cycle, which has 49 days to expiration. Here are, is more information regarding this trade. It tells me my commissions and estimated fees, as well as my estimated buying power effect, which it says will be reduced by $284.34. And that comes from the maximum loss potential plus the commissions and fees. So now that this is all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and click send order. And I just got filled instantly because I selected a price that was a little bit above the mid price, which means I have a very good chance of getting filled at that price because that's not the best price for me. So to close this position, I'm gonna to go to my positions tab, open up Facebook, just click both of the options. I'm going to right click, close position, this is telling me I can sell the spread for $2.75, which is the mid price. So let's go ahead and see if I get that price. And there we go. So I'm out of the Facebook spread that I just bought 10 seconds ago. I do realize I took a small loss on that spread, but I'm more than happy to do that to demonstrate to you exactly how you can get in and out of a spread using real trading software. I hope those tips were helpful and that you have a better understanding of how to go ahead and set up a bull call spread position on your own using whatever brokerage platform you might be using. To wrap up this video, I'm gonna go through a couple frequently asked questions in regards to the bull call spread strategy. The first frequently asked question is, do you have to hold a bull call spread through its expiration date or can you sell the call spread before it reaches its expiration date? The answer is that with stocks and options, you can open and close your positions at any moment. All you have to do is do the opposite trade that you did when you entered the position. When buying a call spread, you purchased a call option and you sold another call option at a higher strike price. So to close the bull call spread position, all you have to do is sell the call option that you purchased and buy back the option that you sold, and that will effectively lock in whatever profit or loss that you have on that position when you close that trade. For instance, if you bought a call spread for $2.50 
and the spread's value fell to $2, you could sell the call spread for $2 and that would lock in a loss of $50 for every call spread that you bought and sold. The second frequently asked question is, do you have to let the spread expire in the money or can you close the spread before expiration? The answer is if the spread is fully in the money at expiration, meaning the stock price is above the short call strike price, you can let the spread expire in the money and you will not end up with any share position after the fact, but you will be charged exercise and assignment fees by your brokerage firm, which may not be something that you want to do. In my opinion, it is advisable to close the spread before expiration regardless of whether or not it is in the money or out of the money. However, if only the long call is in the money and the short call is out of the money, meaning the stock price is in between the call spread strike prices at expiration, if you let that spread expire in the money, the short call is gonna go out worthless, but the long call that you held through expiration, since that option was in the money, you will purchase 100 shares of stock for every single call option that you held through expiration. For example, if you bought seven call spreads and at expiration only the long call was in the money and you held those seven call options through expiration, you would end up with 700 shares of stock purchased at the long call's strike price. You will also be charged exercise fees by your brokerage firm. In general, it's usually a good decision to close the spread before expiration to avoid any unwanted outcomes regarding exercise and assignment. That's a wrap on the bull call spread option strategy. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you feel more comfortable with how the bull call spread option strategy works. Be sure to check the links down in the description for additional resources and any offers that we have right now. I'm Chris from projectoption.com and I will see you in the next video.